veins and to the picture if I could just wrinkle his veins. I should just be as strong and as stubborn again. I shall answer the topo. The cellars are dry. There's nothing to moisten the mouth of a fly. Said the host, we shall burn up with thirsty so be. Here's a clack of small swipes, half as sour as a wig. Well, in such like extremes, all extremes will come back. Till the tea come and press all our whistles on that. So the tinker, may I never bottom a chair. If I drink of small swipes, good Sir John lie in there. And the blacksmith he threw off his apron, he swore. Small swipes should be moist and his gullet no more. Let it out on the floor for the dry cockroach. And he held up his hammer with reverence to broach. Sir John in his castle without leave or law. And suck out his blood through a reed or a straw where he soaked with the swipes. And he turned him to start to the host for high trees and came down the full court. Just then past the daffy who turned up his nose. They'd fain have him shoved, but he looked to his clothes. He turned to me, he lifted his nose closer, and twirled his stick round. He said, but tis nuisance to lie on the ground. But Bacchus, he laughed, from the old tavern sign, saying, you're now shallow, let the sun shine. Then again they all tried, and the tinker he swore. But the hog's head is grown twice as heavy or more. Nay, nay, said the toper, and riddled as he spoke. While we're all getting weak, <laughs> that's the end of his joke. Because the ploughman came up and cut short his old tune, hallowed woe to his horses, and though it was June, said he'd help them an hour, ere he'd keep them a dry. Well done, said the blacksmith, with helps running high. Then he moves, and by Jingo, success to the plough. Aye, aye, said the cobbler, we'll conquer him now. And the host laughed aloud as his sides ever crack just to see the old ticker's toil. Makes such a gap in his coat as to bend it from collar to flap. The tinker he grunted and he cried bitterly, This garment had been an old tenant with me, and a needle and thread with a little good skill. When I've leisure, we'll make it stand more weather still. But then crack went his trunks from his hip to the knee, with his thrusting no matter for nothing cared he. So long as Sir John rolls along to the door, he's a chip of our block, said the blacksmith and swore. Sure as I live to drive nails in the shoe, you shall have at my cost a full picture or two. The topery hiccups, which hindered an oath, so long as he credit, he'd picture them both. But the host knocked a hint when he'd ordered the dray that Sir Barleycorn's order was purchased and paid. Now the old knight is imprisoned and tamed to waste in the tavern man's cellar again. Oh, now, said the blacksmith, let forth its come first. For the insult swipes off under his hoops so will burst. Here it is, me old hearties. Now drink your thirst full, said the host, for this bingo is worth a strong pull. Never fear for your legs if they're broken today. Winds only blow straws, dust and feathers away. And the casket is full like a giant he lies. And giants alone can his spirits capsize. If he lies in the path, though a king's coming bright, John Barleycorn's mighty and there he will lie. Exactly half done. There the plough lay, people hardly could pass. The horses let loose, pinted up the short grass, and browsed on the bottle of flags lying there by the tinker's own budget for mending a chair. And the miller's horse tied to the old smithy door stood stamping his fleet by the flies bitten saw, awaiting a smith as he wanted his shoe, and he stamped to another fell off and made two. <laughs> They were lost. He sang his old songs. He forgot his old mill. Low winds, high or low, she might rest at her will. And the cobbler.
Father, despite of his bustle for pelf, left the shop all the day to take care of itself. And the toper who carried his house on his head, no wife to be teasing, no bands to be fed, would sit out the week, or the month, or the year, or a lifetime so long as he credit for beer. And the plowman he talked of his skill was divine, how he could plough for others as straight as a nine. And the blacksmith he swore, and he but the command, he could shoot the king's hunter, the best in the land. And the cobbler declared it was his scheme with one scene, he soon get him all of the shoes from the queen. Declared he could beat them all three. Why, give me a pair of old fellas, cried he. I'll make them roar out like a wind in the storm. I'll make them draw piles that are coals hardly warm. The toper said, hey, ah, the toper, and he got wicked and no, no. The toper did nothing but wish he poured full. He swore he could top it all off in one pull. Ah, done, said the tinker, but wind his way. When the bet was to bind him, he nothing to pay. When thus in the face, the live sun in shower weather, they drank bread and sang and got merry together. As the sun it went down, the last gleam from his brow, from the smile of repose on a holiday plough, the dooms they approached, the dew was like a rain, fell thick and hung pearls on the old sorrel maid. But the horse that the miller had brought to be shod, and the morning had woke, saw a sight rather odd, for a bit of the halter still hung at the door, bit through by the horse now and feed on the moor, and the old ticker's budget lay still in the weather, while all kept on singing and drinking.